At 18, Yossi found himself in the Israeli Navy, a requisite for young Israeli men. Despite the obligation, he seized the opportunity, honing survival skills crucial for life's unpredictable moments. Stationed in the Red Sea, far from familiarity, Yossi encountered diverse perspectives, notably from a Bedouin man who introduced him to the nomadic lifestyle he found intriguing yet risky. Inspired by Henry Charrier's captivating autobiography, Papillon, Yossi embarked on a dual quest to venture into the Amazonian wilderness and seek the blessing of his literary hero. Little did he know, fate had a remarkable twist in store. The Amazon, a realm of enchanting beauty and perilous hazards, entices with its dense foliage and teeming wildlife. From electric eels to venomous snakes, the rainforest harbors myriad dangers, its thick canopy obscuring sunlight and shrouding the ground in perpetual shadow. Despite its perils, what draws individuals to this unforgiving landscape remains a compelling mystery. The Amazon rainforest stands as the last bastion of its kind, encompassing half of the world's remaining rainforests. Its allure extends beyond mere adventure. Nestled far from urban life, the Amazon nurtures an unparalleled diversity of plant and animal species. Here, nature flourishes in abundance, with towering giants like the Kapok tree reaching heights exceeding 200 feet. This vast expanse yields over 80% of the fruits consumed globally, including avocados, coconuts, and mangoes, making it a veritable paradise for explorers, akin to Métis Everest for mountaineers. After three years of service in the Navy, Yossi Ginsberg felt the pull of his dreams and decided to leave his stable job behind. Little did he know, this leap was just the beginning of a journey fraught with even greater risks. However, before he could set foot in the Amazon, he faced a formidable obstacle, finances. Determined to fund his expedition, Yossi took on various jobs across the globe. From construction work in Norway to fishing in Alaska and manual labor in New York City. Despite his tireless efforts, he found himself journeying through Africa and Mexico, yet still far from his ultimate destination. Finally arriving in South America after years of toil, Yossi found himself on the brink of realizing his dreams, meeting his hero and delving into the depths of the Amazon. Though the wait had been agonizing, fate dealt a cruel blow. He arrived too late to meet Henry, who had passed away. Undeterred, Yossi pressed on, drawing inspiration from the teachings of the Bedouin nomad he had encountered. Embarking on his Amazonian adventure, Yossi embraced the concept of hitchhiking as a means of frugal travel. From Venezuela to Colombia, he hitched rides, encountering fellow adventurers like Marcus Stam, a Swiss teacher drawn to the rainforest allure. Together, they embarked on a journey into the heart of the Amazon, united by their shared thirst for exploration. Marcus and Yossi forged a fast friendship, united in their readiness for adventure. Their journey led them to La Paz, Bolivia, the gateway to the rainforest. Initially, there was nothing amiss for the pair, until a mysterious figure entered their lives, poised to alter their fates forever. They encountered Karl Ruprechter, an Austrian who claimed to be a geologist, with grand plans for a gold-seeking expedition into an ancient village nestled within Bolivia's ancient jungle. The prospect of gold enticed the young men, leading them to entertain the idea of joining forces with this stranger. But were they truly prepared to trust someone they had just met? Excited by the possibilities, Yossi and Marcus eagerly agreed to join Carl, recognizing the potential value of his jumble expertise. Their quartet was completed by the addition of Kevin Gale, an American photographer they met after Carl. Together, the four set their sights on the heart of the wilderness. Arriving in the remote town of Rurinabak, they received solemn warnings from the natives about the perils that awaited them in the jungle. While the group acknowledged the dangers, they pressed onward, buoyed by their own sense of adventure and the locals' insights into the jungle's mysteries. Within days, the group found themselves on the precipice of the forest, with Carl leading the way. Traveling by plane and boat, they navigated closer to their destination, stopping to replenish their supplies along the way. Despite the allure of gold, the natives' warnings lingered, 
prompting the group to reconsider their plans and the risks they were willing to take. Ultimately, driven by human nature's inherent curiosity and ambition, they chose to push forward, albeit with heightened vigilance. Following the Asariyama's river deeper into the forest, the four adventurers remained healthy and optimistic. However, their journey was about to take a dramatic turn, setting the stage for an unforgettable saga. Their dwindling food supply forced them to scavenge for sustenance, resorting to consuming whatever they could find, including monkey meat. Marcus, Yossi's initial companion, refused the unconventional fare and soon suffered from trench foot, hindering his ability to keep pace with the others. Navigating through dense foliage proved arduous, with the group adjusting their strategy to travel during the day and rest at night. The oppressive atmosphere, teeming with poisonous insects, heightened their anxiety, prompting a reassessment of their approach. Arriving at a village, Carl proposed navigating by river, a plan the group reluctantly agreed to. With the villagers' assistance, they constructed a raft, hopeful that this new method would lead them to their destination. However, tensions simmered between Carl and Marcus, their strained relationship threatening the cohesion of the group. Following the Bainey River, the group relied on Carl's purported expertise and map, while Marcus harbored concerns about their uncertain future. Meanwhile, Kevin seized the opportunity to document their journey, while Yossi reveled in the fulfillment of his long-held dream, oblivious to the impending turmoil. After a week on the water, Carl revealed his true intentions, confessing to deceiving the group. Unbeknownst to them, he lacked swimming skills and possessed neither geological knowledge nor a map. His motives were driven by criminal intent, seeping gold in the Amazon. Confronted with the perilous San Pedro Canyon, Carl's deceit shattered their trust and jeopardized their safety. Realizing they could no longer continue with Carl, the betrayed trio faced a daunting decision. Stranded in the heart of the jungle, they opted to part ways, severing ties with their treacherous leader and venturing into the unknown alone. Yossi and Kevin, bound by friendship, resolved to stick together as they continued their journey by river. Meanwhile, Marcus and Carl, the deceitful companion, opted to proceed on foot. Before parting ways, they agreed to reunite in La Paz before Christmas to conclude their shared adventure oblivious to the impending separation. Inexperienced in boating, Yossi and Kevin were gripped by fear when their homemade raft collided with a colossal rock, capsizing and hurtling them downstream. Kevin managed to reach the safety of the shore, but Yossi struggled against the relentless current, fighting to stay afloat amidst the impending waterfall. Despite Kevin's efforts to assist him, Yossi found himself engulfed by the tumultuous waters his desperate struggle to surface in vain. Hurtling over the waterfall, he was tossed among rocks and debris for what seemed an eternity before finally washing ashore, battered but miraculously alive. Alone in the unforgiving wilderness, Yossi grappled with the stark reality of his predicament, stranded without provisions, surrounded by peril. Faced with daunting odds, he clung to a sliver of hope when he discovered his uncle's gift, a book that had sustained his uncle through the horrors of the Holocaust. Embracing this lifeline, Yossi resolved to fight for survival, drawing strength from memories of his family. Despite the overwhelming challenges, he refused to succumb to despair, determined to forge a path back to civilization. Days turned into a harrowing struggle for survival as Yossi battled hunger, exhaustion, and the constant threat of the jungle's dangers. Devoid of supplies or allies, he relied solely on his wits to endure, scavenging for sustenance and seeking refuge from the elements. Yet, amidst the relentless adversity, Yossi unearthed hidden reserves of resilience, learning to navigate the wilderness with ingenuity and resourcefulness. From foraging for berries and fruits to scavenging for eggs, he adapted to the rhythms of the jungle, each day a testament to his unwavering determination. Nightfall brought no respite, as Yossi grappled with the constant struggle to find shelter and evade prowling predators. Enduring attacks from swarming ants and sinking into treacherous quicksand, he faced each new trial with grim determination, refusing to yield to despair. 
But amidst the endless ordeal, Yossi's resilience was put to the ultimate test, as fate prepared to unveil its most unforgiving challenge yet. On the sixth night, as Yossi struggled to find rest, he was jolted awake by a rustling in the undergrowth, his heart racing at the sight of two luminous eyes, a harbinger of the jungle's deadliest predator, the jaguar. Paralyzed by fear, he knew he stood no chance against a, such a formidable foe. Yet, through sheer willpower, he managed to maintain his composure until dawn, only to face a new ordeal as the unforgiving elements unleashed their fury. The second week brought relentless rain, transforming the forest into a treacherous quagmire. Desperate to escape the deluge, Yossi sought higher ground, narrowly evading death in the process. In moments of despair, he found solace in hallucinations of a former love, urging him to persevere against all odds. Prayers for divine intervention mingled with his desperate pleas for release from his torment, until a miraculous sound shattered the silence, the distant hum of an engine. Racing towards the riverside, Yossi's hopes soared as he beheld the familiar face of his friend Kevin, accompanied by villagers who had tirelessly searched for him. Yet the road to recovery was long and arduous, as Yossi spent over three months in hospital, his body ravaged by his harrowing ordeal. Today, Yossi resides in Australia with his family, his reverence for nature undiminished by his traumatic past. In his own words, he cherishes the beauty of all life forms, lamenting the blindness of those who fail to see the abundance of our planet, marred only by human greed and short-sightedness.